Hey there, welcome to The Uplift. We've got a great show for you, a great cast of characters as well. Among them, these, a young piano prodigy with a talent you gotta hear to believe. Also, a 21-year-old with autism and a family business with an important mission statement. Plus, a local hero who went above and beyond to help a stranger stuck in the snow and in dire need of help. And watch me, yes me, conquer my fears. All that and our most heartwarming videos, the ones you just need to see, you're watching The Uplift. Hey there, I'm Tony DeCopel, and this is The Uplift, the show that lifts you up for at least the next 30 minutes, you and me as well. And we are gonna begin with an 11-year-old boy with autism who became known as a piano prodigy because of his Mozart-level skills. They earned him a very big surprise. Here's Vlad Dutier. To say this Colorado boy is a piano prodigy would not be enough. That's 11-year-old Jude, who has autism. One day, he just sat down at the family's electric keyboard, and this is what came out. Jude could listen to any music and figure out how to play it immediately. It was as if he had been taking lessons for years. But Jude has a different explanation. I was inspired. I was inspired by God. Jude was featured in a local TV report which caught the attention of professional piano tuner Bill Magnuson, saying Jude had Mozart-level talent. Magnuson used his father's inheritance to buy the youngster a grand piano, and here it is, arriving in the family's home. An act of kindness that has changed his life. And that is coming from a, a whole total stranger mm -hmm. who never knew him, but just decided to help him in that grand style. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. Yes. Jude and his father, Isaiah Kufi, told us he now plans to play every day and is learning to read music. I never stop. Always on and on and on and on. Yeah. Three hours a day. A divine talent, which his family hopes will ensure him a brighter future. Vladimir Dutit, CBS News, New York. I think they're right. We're moving on now to introduce you to a mom from Georgia who wanted her daughter, who has autism, to have a fulfilling life. So what'd she do? Well, she created something big, very big for her. Here's Caitlin O'Kane. Every morning, 21-year-old Jordan Moore wakes up and goes to work at her very own t-shirt company. She gets to the warehouse, greets her coworkers. You need more shirts? Yeah, okay. And then starts packing up orders with an occasional dance break. Jordan's mom, Jackie, says working at her own company is nothing short of a miracle for Jordan because Jordan was born with autism and verbal apraxia. If you listen to a video of her, you will quickly notice that her speech is not typical speech. She has a very deep voice. She struggles to put her thoughts into words, but she did not speak until she was over the age of six. So when we hear her now, it's amazing how much she's able to say. Jordan continued to overcome challenges but her parents still saw one on the horizon. We just kept finding there was so little opportunity for an individual like her once she got out of school. And it was really keeping my husband and I up at night. Like, what was she going to do? About five years ago, they started Jordan's Summer Shirt Project, a way to keep her busy during the summer while also teaching her new skills. The thought of Jordan being able to independently roll a t-shirt and add a wristband to it without any help seemed like an extremely lofty goal. At that time, she was struggling to do much of anything independently. So when you're thinking about that, how was she going to find a job? And um, it was that summer that we set out, we're like, you know what? Even if she has to have someone help her, that's okay. We're gonna set out to do the best she's able to do. They sold t-shirts with a simple but meaningful design. Be kind to everyone. I wanted our whole idea to have a greater meaning, and that's what led me to the idea of kindness. Um, I originally started thinking of 
getting the world to be kinder to individuals with disabilities. But when I thought about it more, I was like, you know what? This world needs to be kinder to everyone. They found a solution to their problem. When Jordan graduated last year, she had the t-shirt business to look forward to. It will be a good job today. Yep, you're doing a good job today. And on TikTok, where they amassed 2 million followers, they give viewers the behind the scenes of their operations and teach them valuable lessons. Jordan went from people maybe not engaging with her because they didn't know what to say to her to suddenly being at the grocery store or anywhere she goes and their people are like, there's Jordan from TikTok. And she just kind of glows and they, they talk about what she can do. So you went from a life of talking about your struggles to suddenly everybody noticing what you're good at, what you're accomplishing. And it was just such an eye opener for me that I think everybody wants to be seen for their positive, you know, aspect on things. And so often we forget that about individual disabilities. The Summer Shirt Project has turned into a successful year-round business. The company and Jordan are thriving. It's, it feels like nothing short of a miracle, although it's been so much work in the making. I'm so excited. I was setting out to create a job for her, but she's happier. She is confident. You just look at her and everything about her has changed. I think our story shows never give up. Good advice. Also good advice. Be kind to everyone. Nice t-shirts there. Coming up, meet the woman who saw a complete stranger stranded in the snow and went above and beyond to save that stranger's life. Plus our heartwarming videos, you know the ones, you gotta see them, stick around. Welcome back to The Uplift and welcome back to a whole platter of those heartwarming and delicious videos, the ones you just gotta see. And we are gonna start with a bride doing a first look with her son on her wedding day. You look so handsome. Wow, you look you so nice. You look so nice. sharp, Papa. Wow, you look great, baby. Wow. You like your suit? You like it? Oh. You look amazing. You ready to walk me down the aisle? Think you can do it? You gonna cry? No. You need a napkin? Oh, I don't want you to cry. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I love you. You can hug, Mommy. Yeah, give her a hug. Uh -huh. Oh. Happy tears? You promise? You promise? You promise? Oh, baby. Love you so much. Oh, that's Makai, 11 years old, uh, assuring his mom, yes, they were happy tears. Yes, he is happy, very happy for her big day. Very sweet story. Can we top it with our next video? It comes from Brianna Hammond, a recent graduate from the George Washington University Law School, who checked her bar exam results with her family watching, and their reaction says it all. Hammond Esquire, it would appear she is a lawyer now. I think she passed that exam. Congratulations. Coming up, I set out to conquer my fears, one of the biggest, one step at a time. Want to try to guess what I did? We'll show you. Plus, David Begno introduces us to a woman who saved the life of a complete and total stranger, one in desperate need of help. What makes you emotional? I know he needed help. And I I just kept thinking about what if it was my family member? Christmas wasn't even about the gifts, about my kids. It wasn't. It was literally him. When a truly massive blizzard hit Buffalo and residents were urged to stay indoors, one woman found herself looking outside. What she saw was a stranger who was in dire need of help. She opened her home to him 
And this is what happened next. This is the first time that Yvonne White is going to see the home where her brother was treated like family. Hi! Hi. How are you? <laughs> By a woman so who oh. rescued him. Put it in perspective, you saved his life. You saved another human being's life. During the blizzard last month in Buffalo, New York, Shakira Autry took action when others might be less willing. What you did was just beautiful. Just beautiful. I just did. You yeah, know, but, but you I know, he still... made him comfortable. Yes. He felt the love. He was at my door banging. When I woke up, um, I heard, help, help. It was Christmas Eve. Shakira looked out her window and saw that man struggling in the snow. He keeps screaming, help, I don't know what to do. I feel so terrible. It was four degrees outside. He can't even walk, like the, the wind is so bad. The wind was gusting 53 miles per hour. He had no gloves on, looked lost and in pain. The 35-year-old and her boyfriend, Trent Alls Jr., took him in. 64-year-old Joey White has the mental capacity of a 10-year-old, according to his sister. He lives in a group home, just a few blocks away from Shakira's home. That morning, Joey left home headed for a movie theater, where he's worked as a custodian for 40 years. It's unclear how long he lingered in the cold. He was so frozen. His clothing was completely froze. What were his fingers like? They were in a, it was balled up with the bag in his hand. I told him, I walked him through, I said, I have to cut the bag because the bag was froze. He had ice, literally ice balls around his hand. After bandaging his severely frostbitten hands, Shakira called 911 again and again, but the weather conditions made it impossible for first responders to reach them. I was waiting for the National Guards and I still was waiting for 911, paramedics, fire, I was waiting for anybody and nobody ever came. As the hours passed, the snow just kept piling up. So Joey spent Christmas with Shakira, Trent, and their kids. She did his laundry, fed him, even played movies for him. We got to get some help. All the while, his hands were literally changing color, and the pain was becoming unbearable. I was thinking, if there's going to take them this long yeah. to come and get him, yeah and he's alive, how long is it gonna take him to come and get a dead body if he mm. was to pass? I couldn't wrap my head around, I, I just couldn't do it. Mm. This young man's fingers is going to fall off. On Christmas night, she turned to social media, panicking. I had to use these to cut the ring off of his finger. I'm not no surgeon. I'm, I'm right here, Joe. About 36 hours after their ordeal began. I thank these men for helping. Two Good Samaritans answered her plea. Yeah, we all love you. We right here with you. You hear me? Because what you tell me, I'm your friend, right? We're friends, right? We're friends forever. And drove them to the hospital. When I got in the truck, I, he told me he was scared. And I said, I'm scared too. I said, I'm scared too, Joey. And I said, you know, we got help. We're going to go. The doctors are going to take care of you. And then when he told me he loved me, I knew, I knew he really felt safe. This man could have died, 64 years old, could have died outside. I wasn't letting that happen on my watch and he wasn't gonna die in front of my kids. What do you think the takeaway is? I feel that especially nowadays, the way our country is, everything is just, you know, the weather is terrible, this is terrible. And then to see the compassion and the love with two strangers, yeah. Is, is just amazing. So you tell me where the connection is. It's here. It's, it's, it's Bingo. not here. It's Bingo. clear. We got him to the emergency room. In the spirit of that first Christmas, more than 2,000 years ago, Shakira Autry made room in her home and in her heart for that stranger in me. I'm right here. When you think back on it all, mm -hmm. what makes you emotional? I knew he needed help. And I just kept thinking about what if it was my family member? Christmas wasn't even about the gifts, about my kids. It wasn't, it was literally him. Christmas was him. He was a very good Christmas gift. And now for the rest of my life, I will remember him. What would you say to people watching this who will encounter something down the road? And people should be kind, be loving. Well, we'll take a lesson from you, so thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>
Thank you both. That's a very moving piece. Coming up, you will finally, at long last, see the glory and the mortification of my attempt to conquer a very big fear. It's not an exercise class, although it looks like one. Was I successful? You will be the judge, and we will show you after the break. Recently, my CBS Mornings co-anchors and I set out to conquer our fears. Mine was a biggie, something I had harbored since I was a kid, but I got a little professional help with it, not the kind you're thinking of, and I took the steps, literally, to finally overcome it. Sorry, Joan Baez. The idea of dancing on camera, <laughs> even with you, Joan, <laughs> Too much for me. Go like this, and that's James Brown. Not gonna happen, Sam Rockwell. I think what's being revealed here is that you, in fact, do have a talent for dancing, I like and I do not. DJ D Nice joins us on the turntables. Peer into my eyes, America. I am not a dancer. The dancing brings <laughs> out anxiety and stress. It doesn't relieve it. Me personally, and I think other people feel uncomfortable too when I start dancing. So you can imagine how I felt. Hi, Jess. <laughs> Walking into a dance lesson. Don't, you can't go, you can't go. You a session with go, Jessica Tony. Castro. So nice to meet you. She's danced with some of the biggest names in music, appeared in hit movies, and taken on some of the other hard cases in choreography for CBS's Come Dance With Me. I hear that you want to dance. I don't really want to <laughs> dance, but I took a quick read of my contract, yes. and I think I kind of have to uh, try to dance. Do you trust me? <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm going to do my best. Left, right. Yes, yes. She yes, used yes, basketball yes. as a way in. Dribble the ball with me. Dribble the ball. Boom. And I didn't Boom. always love the process. Boom. Now point to the people. No, I can't point, point to the people. I'm not kidding. Point, point, point to the people. Point. One people. She's not. No, right. yes, right. yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Okay. You know what dance is? Honestly, dance is confidence. Move it out. But you know what Just does not build right. confidence? Step right, step right. This way? This way, step right. Okay. Seeing yourself in yeah. the mirror looking party. like this. Party starter, yes. No, no, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hands up in the air. Yeah! <laughs> Before long, though, I did begin to understand the basics. When you feel like you're getting lost in the sauce, yeah. hey, just take it in, relax. The relax. groove, yes. the double bounce, the step touch, right. the yeah. grapevine, and the rock. <laughs> oh my god, Tony, this was so good. I think I had fun. Jessica asked me to practice some more at home, and I did. <laughs> but I kept thinking about a day one problem, an issue far bigger than where to put my feet. You hear that beat? No, I hear No. the heartbeat. I often could not find the beat. Come, bring your hand here. Even when I was literally feeling it. Feel that vibration? Sort of. A problem we would have to address right away on day two. I think the fundamental challenge for me is not the movement, it's not the grace of it, it's not the pace, it's I don't hear music properly for dance. Right. I hear lyrics and I follow them, I don't hear beat. Don't get ahead of the beat. As I search for any sort of rhythm on that second day. It's like a stamp. Six, seven, eight, one. Four, I don't hear it at all. Six, seven, eight. I also thought a lot about walking out. I, don't, I feel like I have a childhood ear injury. But Jessica would not walk out on me. You see the tapping that you're doing with yeah. your feet? That's it. Tap. Eventually, she got my attention again with some moves to help me impress Katie. <laughs> I love my wife. I love my wife. That's right. There you go. Her enthusiasm lifted mine. And as our last training day yeah, came to a close, good. We're good. <sighs> some parting advice. Instead of looking down and seeing the dance in your head, come up with it and just trust in what we've worked on. Okay. Hello! But come Friday night, what I honestly felt was fear. Hi! 
Hey, I'm Jessica. Hello. 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 And the hope that something would save me from embarrassing myself inside this New York City nightclub. We have a couple more minutes for that blackout. <laughs> Come on, New York City. Turn on your ACs. Remember, dance is all about what? Attitude and confidence. That's right. And we have that tonight? Yeah. Yes! We got it. <laughs> At least Katie was confident. I think you might have a couple moments. The guy is a college baseball player. He's very coordinated. He is a graceful man, believe it or not. Here we go! And once the music started to play, I realized something I probably should have when I was 17. A good night of dancing is not about the moves. It's about the feeling. And the friends. Oh, yeah, yeah! Who, in this case, dropped by unexpectedly. On a scale of 1 to 10, considering where he started, I'm going to give him an 11. <laughs> I'm not that, I'm a, I'm a tougher grader. I grade on, you're grading on the curve, clearly. He wasn't trying to be a professional dancer. No. He just wanted to have fun. What do you give him? I would give him a nine. <laughs> I mean, nobody's perfect. <laughs> Not bad for a former wallflower. Look into my eyes, America. I am now, apparently, yep, a dancer. And that is our show. I hope it brightened your day, lifted you up. It did for me. I'm going to go look for some more good news. See you next time.